Let me ask you something. Wouldn't you like to know what it's like living in a mansion like this? Or should I ask the question, what would it feel like to live in a mansion like this? This is the abandoned Bradley Smith Time Capsule Mansion in the deep south of the United States. Considering that it was built in 1907, it was home to only two wealthy families that lived inside. The early times of the deep south of some of the original pioneers that started it all. You know, the good old days before internet and smartphones. A time where Greek revival style houses and mansions were the ultimate craze. A movement that began in the middle of the 18th century, but mainly flourished in the 18th and 19th centuries. This house is from an era of opulence. Refined, stylish, elegant, and fashionable. This house was home to a large family. So many photos and photo albums were left behind. While the house is large and refined, it has so much warmth. Back then, they just made houses differently than they do today. So many intricate and fine details throughout. They didn't have to produce elements to look like this. But they did it anyway, and called it art. Because back then, workers took pride in their work when they didn't have to. Throughout this episode, I want to share with you my story and experience inside this exquisite abandoned mansion and take you back to the past as I research clues hiding behind the veil of this forgotten masterpiece. The name is Ranger Rick. My mission in this series is to go back to the past, dig it up, search for clues, and stay curious. In each episode, I tell stories of abandoned places and their history. So come with me, let's explore together and see what we can find. Okay, so before we get into the meat and potatoes of this mansion, I feel it's necessary to tell you some backstory of this house's neighborhood in Birmingham, Alabama. Glen Iris is a historical neighborhood in Birmingham's Southside community. The neighborhood centers around Glen Iris Park, a central park with 20 residential lots of two acres each. The park was created by Robert Jameson Sr who around 1901 envisioned and developed a highly exclusive place for Birmingham's elite to live. Most of the homes were built between 1901 and 1940, with some homes being built on open lots in later years. Each home surrounded the park, which contained trails and green spaces for residents to enjoy. The initial residents each agreed not to sell their homes without the consent of the other neighbors. Across its history, many prominent Birmingham families have lived in Glen Iris, including W.B. G. Harding, president of the First National Bank, and the Bradley and Smith family of this home, just to name a few, even though there were many others. In recent decades, various developers have proposed new apartments in or around Glen Iris Park primarily due to the proximity of the University of Alabama. However, Glen Iris still remains its historical character. Currently, a number of homes in Glen Iris Park are on the National Register of Historical Places, including this place being no exception. The Glen Iris neighborhood is only one of three neighborhoods in the city of Birmingham, Alabama that does not have a majority of residents falling into its same racial category. 
around 44% of residents in Glen Iris are black, followed by around 37% which are white. Glen Iris also has a large number of immigrants from Latin Hispanic descent. Now that you have a good idea of the backstory, I think it's time we go inside and see what they left behind. Here we are, inside one of the most beautifully abandoned time capsules I have ever seen. I'll promise I'll come back in just a moment to finish this intriguing story. But for right now, let's glance around and appreciate the fine art and visuals that went into an early 1900s Southern mansion. Back inside the house, I discovered many mysteries were unfolding right before my very eyes. I went through photo albums, letters, obituaries, and many files that helped me put the pieces together the best I could. It turns out two families owned this house. In 1907, a man named Thomas Walter III built this home for Lee Carrington Bradley. He was also responsible for several other historic homes in the area, including the residence of Robert Jameson Sr., which was influenced by his wife's Louisiana ancestry. Lee Carrington Bradley was born in Birmingham on November 12, 1871. He graduated from the Southern University of Greensboro now known as Birmingham Southern College, in 1890. Bradley would go on to practice law in 1892 and would eventually end up getting married to his wife four years later. They would go on to have two children, but the second child would pass away at the age of 21 after choking to death on an oyster shell inside this very house. His mother was so upset that she would always save him a spot at the dinner table when eating supper, even though she knew he wasn't coming back. Lee Bradley would continue practicing law 
and eventually opened up his law firm with a few other notable residents from Alabama. Bradley was so good at his craft that the 28th president of the United States, Woodrow Wilson, would ask him to be a part of his team as council custodian for one of his properties. Bradley was also responsible for the successful termination of the receivership and the organization of Birmingham Electric Company, which took over the assets of the Birmingham Railway Light and Power Company. He had his hands on many other successful things throughout the years, but would pass away on May 31, 1942. His funeral was held at this house and he was buried at Elmwood Cemetery in Alabama, along with the rest of his family. There is so much more to the story than this, like the second family who resided in this house. But I'll save that part for later when I head upstairs. So for right now, let's dig around and explore. All right, y'all, so if you know me, you know the drill. I wanna make this house seem like if you were the owner, how would it feel if you were the owner coming in right through that front door? Now, I don't wanna to stand too close to the front door for obvious reasons, but we are surrounded by people right now and apartments, so this place is very sketchy, unfortunately, but it is what it is. I really wanna show you guys what's up with this house. This is probably one of the most exquisite time capsule mansions I have ever seen, ever. And I do mean that. Now let's explore. Now I'm gonna hop, skip, and jump around a little bit because some rooms you do have to avoid. There are people looking inside and I just don't wanna disturb anybody. Not that I mean any harm. I'm not taking anything, I'm not stealing nothing. I'm just here to document history and this place I kid you not, is all about the history. Even though I couldn't find much, you can tell by the in intricate details of this place that this place does not disappoint. And you could probably hear the weariness in my voice because I am a little sketched out. So we have to take our time, our good old time going through all of these rooms and exploring together because it's just that intense. If you look through all the windows, we're surrounded by apartments and people. So let's just get to it. One of the first rooms that you see and enter is this is probably the cleanest room, but as you can tell, mother nature has started taking over this place too. Like around here and stuff. This will be the dining room. And it looks like you have some like I don't want to get too, too close to the window. I'm so nervous right now. You can probably hear it in my voice for real. But like, I think this was like, maybe like an art studio. It had to be because look at all the paint. And I think this was unrelated to the house. I don't think this had anything to do with the house. And it looks like here's a blank canvas. Sakura Cray Pass. I guess these were like little crayons or something. I don't want to stand too close to that window, no. All right, I'm backing out. Here we go, let's go to the other end. It's a nice piece of dining room furniture right there. I'm loving these chandeliers, and as you'll see as we go along, we have plenty of them. 
This house does not disappoint with chandeliers, I promise you that. Super promise you. Let's try to stay out the windows. We're not here to disturb nobody, no. I feel like I'm a little bit too close to these windows, but I really want to show you guys like what's up with this place. Now, I already went through this house. I did my cinematics. I got to take pictures and stuff, but right now I am talking to you one-on-one -on -one so we can explore together and kind of go through it. This is the part where you guys leave stuff down in the comments. If there's anything I missed or anything you want to point out or had in the past that you find interesting, like a little memento that I'm looking at, definitely freeze frame it, leave it in the comments, and let's talk about it. One of the coolest things I found in this house was this. And no, there's no shotguns or bullets left behind, but I like these little spoons. What are these? They look, they look like little spoons or something. I guess that's what that is, but like for what? I'm guessing it's for like tea? Maybe they were British, who knows? We can only speculate. But that's a cool looking piece right there. All right, we have entered back into the entryway on where you come in from. And one of the first things that catches your eye when you come in is this grandfather cuckoo clock. I don't think it's a cuckoo clock, it's just a grandfather cock. clock. Oh my God. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm like really sketched out. I don't even know what to talk about right now because it's just that eerie of a place that you start to stutter whenever you come inside of a place like this, especially of this caliber. I love the chandeliers. Beautiful. Doesn't get any better than that. Something else that caught my attention. You see all these glasses right here? Well, a lot of them are on the floor, just scattered about. In like an L shape or like a boot shaped. Why is that? I have no clue. And let me zoom in a little bit more. I would go in there, but I don't. Not again. But you see those little cups right there? Right in front of the fireplace? I like those a lot. Probably worth a lot of money too. I think it's all crystal. And here is a shot of the front of the house. It looks like this photo is very well preserved. Takes you back to the past. That's what the house originally looked like. Now it's renovated and deteriorating again. I swear, this is probably one of my most favorite entryways of a hallway ever. I call this the grand entrance, along with, I wanna take care of that room next, but we might have to actually go back out to come back around because if you go walk around this area, you can easily be spotted in that window and like the neighbors are like 10 feet away, no joke. So, let's take a look at the ceiling because the ceiling is on point. I love it, love it, love it. You're never gonna see crown molding like that ever again in your life. They don't make buildings like they used to. All right, let's try to get into that room first. All right, let's go. All right, so I'm at the opposite end, and like I said, you can't go walk right in this area because if you do, that's like danger zone. You do not wanna let the neighbors catch you, even though I'm not doing anything wrong. Um, I just like to take pictures and document places and that's it. And I just want to tell the stories of these people that used to live here because I'm obsessed with this stuff. I like this stuff, finding time capsules that take you back to the past. You know what I mean? And that looks like a good picture of the family. This looks like some time capsule photos. The lady is right there, but the name on it says Logan. I don't think that is the lady's name. That's a guy's name, Logan. It's a cool name. Let me put that back where I found it, just like this. I wanna bring you guys a little bit further in right here so you can kind of see what's going on by the window. I know it's a little blown up with the light, but I had to adjust my camera because I do not have an external light right now. 
for obvious reasons. But look at all the decay in this room. Whoa, this place had an elevator right behind this door. I didn't even know that. That is scary. This place has had an elevator and it's in this room too. We're still in this room. It's right behind this door. But there's a legit elevator here. That's amazing. Close that up like I got it. And here's the buttons that go up and down, but I'm not gonna press them. I know you want me to, but I ain't. Nope, nope, nope. A really cool looking train. 21st Century Limited. This is probably one of my favorite pieces of furniture in this house. It looks, it looks like a chair, but I think it's actually called a settee. And it's like a seating area right when you come in through the entryway. And it looks like they have like, I'm gonna get a little bit closer so you can see what's going on. But like these claw legs along with like Chinese dragons, like all over this thing, like look at this. So much detail when you rub your fingernails across it. That is a lot of detail. And look, here you go, like Chinese dragons, like all throughout. This looks like something from like aliens when you get in the hive mind. That's exactly what this thing looks like. I wonder if it's any comfortable. I'm gonna sit on it. It's really not comfortable. <laughs> all right, so. The next room we need to go into is like one of the most dangerous rooms here. <sighs> All right, let's go right ahead. All right, so I say this is a dangerous room because we're right next to neighbors. Even though I did get permission to do this place, I just don't want to alarm anybody, you know what I mean? I don't want to go too deep into that room though. Somebody could easily see you. Probably got a lot of cool things in there. Let's take a dip inside this room. I have to up my exposure a little bit here to compensate for the extreme low light in here. I don't want to get too close to any of these windows. You got that one and that one right there. But this is a lovely looking, I'm gonna just call this like a the Cigar Lounge Chill Room, because that's exactly what this place looks like in here. And it looks like you got these, like, African statues that are lined up around there. That looks like where they came from. I don't want to get too far into this room, because, like, let me see, let me point that camera around that corner like that. Yeah, this is, like, right on the front porch. Let me just toss my camera way over here like that. You see that? Got some cool looking statues and stuff. I love it. This is great. This is a great find. It's like one of the best time capsules I think I've ever done. They just keep on getting better and better. You see what I mean by these like little African guys right here? I don't think that's African made, but I think that's definitely African made. Kind of looks like it. But look at this library shelf. I'm gonna back away a little bit here. So, sorry if I'm moving awkward, but I got to in a place like this. But look at this. All this is all solid wood, along with all these cyclo cyclopedias. Did I say that right? A cyclopedia. <laughs> uh, this is just too much to take in. Let me zoom in a little bit further. Now, I'm not going to walk over there, but I'm going to use my ultra zoom here. Look at that. It's like these little Florida leaves on that uh, woodwork right there. I'm going to just call it woodwork because I just cannot think right now. Look at the furniture. I actually used to sell furniture back in the day, so I got a basic knowledge of what I'm looking at. I sold furniture for like almost 15 years. And... Yeah, I mean, I got a basic knowledge of what I'm looking at, but, like, this stuff is beyond what I used to sell. Like, all of this stuff. Like, this is so well made. 
All right, I'm wasting time. I need to get to the other room. Look at that chandelier. I told y'all, this place is all about them chandeliers and maybe a couple of other back rooms. But this is the kitchen. And I love these little lamps. Definitely reminds me of the 70s. And can somebody please tell me what, well, that's a telephone. You see what I'm saying? You use the dialer right here and the operator will connect you. But can somebody please tell me what this is? It's got clocks on it and a bell. But I don't know if that's a real clock. Look at these big old fat numbers. This is when you can tell an elderly person lived here. Look how big they are. And I really like this little fireplace in here. These little things right here are definitely from the 70s or maybe even the 80s. No, I want to say like the mid 70s. These little kitchen fixtures. It's kind of cool. Whoever once lived here had a motorized chair that used to go up the stairs and look at it it went all the way around too how cool is that that is so cool but I'm guessing they were a little bit on the older side an elderly person you just strap yourself right here press the button on the side and go whoop takes you all the way up and I think I'm ready to go upstairs and film so stick around and wait till you see what's next. I promise you will not be disappointed. Ladies, trust me, you want to see this. Upon entering the upstairs landing, you are immediately greeted by three large department store mirrors. This is where the women would dress for events as seamstress sewed the hems. These mirrors always saw beautifully dressed women and this is one of those dresses to prove that.
I know it may seem like a lot to take in, but this house, believe it or not, has been sitting left untouched for over 20 years. You can tell this house was full of warmth and vibrancy. And I say the word was because Mother Nature has seemed to take a toll on this house from water damage and the extent of time. So, what about the second family that resided in this house? After massive amounts of research, looking throughout, the house was last lived in by a man named Ole and his wife Carolyn Smith. Ole worked in Washington, D.C. of the FBI and graduated from the University of Alabama Law School in the late 40s. and his wife went on to have four children. His wife taught school for several years and would later spend her time in the family's real estate business. In later years, Ole Smith worked at a local law firm in Alabama. He then became vice president of the Alabama Power Company. Unfortunately, life happened and Carolyn Smith, according to tax records, Mr. Smith's wife passed away in 2003 and Mr. Smith continued to live in the house until 2016. Here's the thing that doesn't add up. As I recently said, the house was left untouched since 2003, according to the calendar on the wall. But the tax records show differently. My theory is, maybe part of the house was left untouched. You know, part of the house that Carolyn Smith stayed in the most. Or, should I say, part of the house that reminded Ole of Carolyn. Maybe it hurt him so much to go inside those rooms that he left them untouched, including the calendar year. Now, we, I want to take you guys right inside this hallway here because I found this very interesting, this room. This room is definitely for changing because you got the ladies dress right there. And you got a couple of other things right here in this area. But when you come over here, this door becomes, watch me open this, an open mirror. How cool is that? So you can kind of look at yourself while you change. Isn't that cool? Wave hi to the camera. Give me a thumbs up. 
for sure. And another chandelier, does not disappoint, plenty of those. Followed by this thing right here. It looks like some Japanese characters on there, but I'm not too sure what they're doing. And if you look at this cool piece, look at this. This right here, I know it's kind of hard to believe, but this right here was the phone where you would hang your phone up and dial. And this would be the operator section. That is a old piece of, I'm gonna just go ahead and call it furniture, because why not? Kind of looked like an old piece of furniture fixture. Here's another room with, oh, I like this. This is like a little baby cat. Look at that thing. It's like a little stuffed cat. And not much else in here except some box springs. And that goes into the next room. I'm telling you, this place does not end. You want it to end, it ain't gonna end. It just keeps on giving. Oh, look at this. How often do you see these? Pencil sharpeners. Here we go, right here, with a man's top hat. Yep, I'm not gonna pick that up because it feels wet. But right here, if we was to walk on a, on a balcony, I'm not gonna walk out there, but that is the balcony upstairs. You just have to believe me. Okay, so the next room you go into, we're still on the upstairs. Smells like some heavy mold up here. That's because the ceiling's been leaking. And I like this right here, this Japanese, I think I want to call that a table cover. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. If I'm wrong, please tell me. But I think it's like a table, like for your dining room set, it's like a protector cover for that. What is it doing up here? I have no idea. We look at all the intricate details on that. That is cool. We look like somebody here won an award for their leadership. What a nice gesture. I mean, you could really go through all of this all day long. I just don't have enough time. But just to kind of give you a brief summary of what they listened to, this is like a whole bunch of records here. You got some person named Chet Atkins, never heard of him. The Norman Lubov Choir, if I'm pronouncing it right. And then we got some books right here, The Da Vinci Code, I'm familiar with that even though I don't know the whole story. Somebody please tell me what this metal thing is. It looks like an S. It goes, sh -sh -sh -sh, and goes all the way down. I do not know what that is, but it's got like a little, um, looks like a little on and off switch, or that might be a heater or something. Like it heats your clothes up, maybe? I have no idea. Maybe I'll stop them from wrinkling. Um, but that is the neighbor's yard. Let me turn down my ISO real quick so you can see what's going on. Yep, that's what I figured. I've never seen a bathroom with carpet on the floor. Actually, yes, I have. But why would you do that? You have carpet in your bathroom. It does not make any sense to me at all. What is this? I don't know if this was used for sewing or what. But it looks solid, whatever this contraption is down here. Who knows? That's a nasty shower, though. And you have a family photo in the bathroom that looks like this, very formal. Why would you have a family photo, very formal looking like that, in your bathroom? But look, this place has seen better days. Not judging, but if that's what you want to do, go ahead. And look, that's a serious leak right there with the roof. And it's causing all of this fungus and mildew just build up over time. If you open this door right here, it goes to like a little secret passageway that has like extra drawer space in there. Kind of makes me curious, what are they hiding in here? The drawers are loaded. The drawers are absolutely loaded. I just don't have enough time to dig through all of them. But I'm sure they're little family mementos. Still got the attic to do, but I'm gonna save that for last. Oh God, the dust is getting to me. 
excuse me, dust is getting to me for sure. Here's a bathroom. Let's take a quick look at that. Can we, can we get it? Can we get, there we go, there's some light. Looks more modern than anything. Almost didn't spot these photos, but they're here. Now this room, when you walk into this hallway right here, you see this room. These people loved a lot of foreign stuff, I can tell. Tons and tons of shoes up top. I really like this little Japanese thing right here. Comment down below if you know what that is. Reminds me of that little Karate Kid thing when he was banging on the drums at right at the very end when he was facing the final boss. That's what this kind of reminds me of. Jewelry, everything has just been left behind and definitely forgotten about. There's all the ladies' shoes. I can see some, uh, looks like some expensive shoes right there, if I do say so myself. Let's head into the next room and see what we can find. Here we are with this room. This looks like somebody's office. I'm pretty, yeah, this had to be an office. I'm like 100% positive. But you do have some weightlifting equipment up in here too. Maybe it was just like a miscellaneous room. I don't want to walk too far into this room. Too many windows. But that looks like the couple that might have lived here at one time. 2004 on this calendar right here. It's kind of like a cool looking calendar. I think this person who ever lived here was definitely in the armed forces. Tell by these little mementos laying around, these pictures and stuff. Somebody's office chair. And this is the coolest lamp. If you're a power plant fan, you would love this lamp because look at it. That's connected to the lamp. Ain't that cool? I think we've seen everything that's on the second floor. Pretty sure I covered everything. Oh, one thing I missed was this bedroom right here. And again, I don't want to walk too far into this room because you got a window right there. And even though I got permission to do this place, I don't want to upset anybody with the neighbors and stuff. It is what it is. I don't want them to know somebody's in a house, an abandoned house right next to them. But I mean no harm. But that's what's kind of in this room. This looks like somebody's baby picture. So I have one more area to cover before I start doing my photo shoot. So I'm gonna get my phone out and illuminate this area. This is the attic, I think, I'm pretty sure. This place has got a basement too, but it's not that exciting, trust me. So I'm not gonna even show it. All right, so we got up here. Easy peasy. Let's turn off the light. So as you can tell, who that took a lot out of me. When you get up here, it's not a disappointment because this is one of the oldest wheelchairs I've ever seen in my life. Look at that. Look how old that thing is. That's almost spooky looking, honestly. Who stayed in this thing? I don't know, but that is very haunting. Let me push that out the way. There's a U.S. mailbox right here. That's pretty nifty. Oh, is this a lunchbox? This is a lunchbox with no lunch in it. <laughs> Here's something else. Found somebody's picture. Looks like an old baby picture. Can't believe I touched that. Ugh. Now, sorry if this is looking a little grain. Oops, sorry about that. Sorry if this is a little looking a little grainy on camera, but I had to turn up my camera exposure really high because it is extremely dark in here and I'm not going to turn on any lights I'm actually using just artificial light from the camera so it's going to look a little grainy 
but I just want you to get the basic idea of what's going on in here. This area, I might actually have to use my cell phone light just so I can show you what's up. Ugh. Can y'all see that in there? That goes, I can't even step in there to so much stuff, but that goes even deeper into the house. I'm gonna leave that part a mystery though. And no place is complete without say it with me, Christmas decor, like a Christmas tree. If we walk back over here, oh, spotted a porta potty. Yeah, older person, the elderly person definitely must have lived here, for sure. And that newspaper or whatever that is says Majestic Company. There's so much stuff in here. Let me turn that down a little bit. And let's see what's over here. I'm almost scared to walk over here because the floor is kind of flimsy. Oh, I think I stepped on something. The floor is definitely flimsy. Look at that old TV set. I honestly don't think anybody's been in this attic for centuries. <laughs> well, maybe not centuries, but definitely decades. At least 20 years or so. And we have an old record player right here. Can y'all see that? And if you are a fan of the Ninja Turtles, this is April O'Neil's weather coat in yellow that she always used to wear. I'm actually just making that up, but it sounded funny. So just go with the flow. And as we walk around here, we see a hodgepodge of just nothingness, just nothing. <laughs> it's a whole bunch of nothing. Just a bunch of briefcases, suitcases. This house is absolutely just loaded with stuff. I mean, there's so much to talk about, but so little time to do this. In order for me to do a house like this properly, I would have to spend at least a week inside of here, like almost live here, you know what I mean? That's a lot of poop. Look at all that. So I think what's going on is cats are coming in here, maybe raccoons, definitely dropping all these feces behind. So let's get out the attic. Let's continue to do photo shoots. And that's about it. As it stands today, the house was transferred within the family to a limited liability company. I would think twice before trespassing on this property. Newly installed cameras and sensors are on the outside and inside, and you would go straight to jail if caught. The house is quickly deteriorating from the extent of time and hopefully one day it'll be revitalized. Until then, neighbors keep a close watch.